Your story today is Animal Habitats by Augustine Carpenter. And this story is an informational text. And remember, informational text is about real people, animals, places, and events. It contains facts that can be checked in other sources. And it may have diagrams and photographs or other illustrations. And the pictures that you see in front of you right now are actual photographs, not drawings that someone did, but these are actual animal photographs. Um, the essential question that I want you to think about is how can some animals change their habitats? And we are going to be using the comprehension strategies clarifying and making connections. And remember, when you clarify, you go back and you reread and check anything that is confusing. You may have to clarify the meaning of an unknown word or clear up some information that may not make sense at first, but don't just go over it. Go make sure that when you're reading, you go back and you um, clarify anything that you had trouble understanding the first time. We'll also be using making connections. And remember, readers connect their own experiences to details and illustrations. And they can also connect other texts that they've read previously to, other connect, um, to the text that they're reading. So let's take a look at animal habitats. Animals need a place to live. They need safe homes. They need a place where they can raise their families. Now, I'm going to stop right here because it's I, this is a good place to make a connection. Because the beginning of the selection reminds me of what people need too. Animals are like people because they need a safe place to live and raise a family. So that's where I can make a connection there. The place where an animal lives is called a habitat. Look at this furry squirrel. He lives in a nest in the tree. Squirrels like to live where they can find lots of food. What kind of food do they like? Like nuts, right? You always see them with nuts. They like acorns and seeds. They bury nuts in the ground. Why? Because so they will have plenty of food in the cold winter months. That's pretty smart. Something else is in the tree. Do you see the woodpecker? It is peeking out of a hole. Who made the hole in the tree? The woodpecker did. He tapped, tapped, tapped with his beak. Now the tree has a hole, but the woodpecker has a place for a nest. Okay. Is there anyone else that's a little confused about what he tapped, tapped, tapped with his beak means? So how can we figure it out? Let's reread this selection, this section just before that sentence and see what other information the author presents. So it says, something else is in the tree. Do you see the woodpecker? It is peeking out of a hole. Who made the hole in the tree? The woodpecker did. He tapped, tapped, tapped with his beak. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. He tapped, tapped, tapped with his beak, and he made the hole in the tree by tap, tapping with his beak. So now he has a place to live in the tree. Some animals live underground. This toad burrowed. That means it dug a hole for a home. When it rains, the toad will come out. Have you ever seen a muddy toad before? This toad looks pretty muddy. Can you guess why? Because that's where his home is, right? He lives right there in mud. Other animals burrow too. Some, some animals dig dens for their homes. These foxes live in a den. So does this woodchuck. Who else lives underground? Moles do. And even families of prairie dogs live underground. Okay, is there anybody else a little confused about where the animals on page 38 and 39 live? What kind of clues do the pictures tell us? If you're thinking about a den, it says some animals live in dens for their homes. Hmm. Do you kind of see how the animals are all coming up out of that hole in the ground? See them? So that kind of gives us a clue as to what that might mean. It means they probably have dug out an area in the ground where they can live with their family. And you see that there's the picture of the foxes living in that hole that they've dug. You've got the woodchuck or groundhog and the mole and even the prairie dogs. Is burrowing good for the ground? Worms burrow everywhere. They create tunnels that go on and on. The soil moves with the worms. It gets more water and air. It also gets more fertilizer. 
which is very good. Rabbits are little animals that live in burrows. Several rabbit families may share one burrow. They eat and sleep there. When they come out of their burrows, they like to eat. They eat flowers and they eat vegetables. That is good for the rabbit, but not for humans. Now, that last sentence is a good place to make a connection because that reminds me of that selection that we read about what green beans need. And Leah told Grandpa she saw a rabbit chewing on the new baby bean plants. And then um, what did Grandpa and Leah do to keep their rabbits away? They, they built a fence, right? So that when it says that that's good for the rabbit, but it's not good for humans, that's because the rabbit will sometimes eat the vegetables right out of our gardens. Some animals live in the water. Other animals live near the water. Beavers live near streams and lakes. They are good swimmers. Trees can always be found near the beaver's home. You might see teeth marks in the trees. They belong to a beaver. He uses wood to make a lodge. So what's that beaver home called? A lodge, right? Sometimes beaver dams make the land flood, which can cause problems. The ground can get too soft. Farmers may lose their crops. On the other hand, beaver dams help other animals. Deer look for plants where the beavers have cut down trees. Ducks make nests on the top of dams, and so do geese. So here's a part that maybe we need to clarify a little bit. Um, I'm kind of thinking, okay, so are beaver dams good or are they bad? And when we read this page, the first part, the first paragraph tells us about problems that they cause. It floods the land, it's bad for the farmers. But then the second paragraph tells us like things that help other animals that, you know, um, deer can look for plants where they've cut down trees and ducks make their nest and so do geese. So when you're thinking, well, is it good or bad? I guess it depends on who you are, right? If you're a farmer, it could be bad. But if you're one of these other animals, it might be a good thing when a beaver builds this dam. Some animals carry their homes with them. A snail has a shell on its back. It stays in its shell when the weather is dry. On a rainy day, a snail comes out to search for food. What do snails eat? They eat what they find in their habitat. They eat fruits and vegetables, and they like to eat from gardens. So there's another animal that likes to eat from our gardens. What about bees? Where do they live? Bees live in a nest called a hive. The hive can be in a tree. Bees make honey. Bees spend, spread pollen from plant to plant. Many plants need bees to survive, and we need plants. So hooray for bees. I know that some of you are kind of scared of bees. When we're at recess, kids run away from bees, but they really are important in helping us grow the food that we need. Where do you live? Do you live in the city? Do you live in the country? Have you changed your habitat in a good way? You can pick up your trash, help water the flowers, <laughs> wave hello to your neighbor. Your home is a habitat for you. So this is a good place to make a connection, make a connection. As I read the questions in the text, I make connections to the text with how I would answer them, right? The author is making me think about ways I've changed my environment. Where do I live? Well, I kind of live out in the suburbs. It says, do you live in the city? No, not really. And I don't really live in the country either. Have I changed my habitat in a good way? Sure. I've planted flowers before. And I've taken care of some of the animals that live around me by putting up a birdhouse or something like that. And I've even planted a garden before. So I have changed my habitat in a good way. It says also waving hello to your neighbor, being friendly to the people around you is a good way to change your habitat. So before we go, we better go back and check on some vocabulary, right? So let's take a look all the way back to the beginning. And let's just look at the very first word, animals. Animals, plural form of animal. A living thing that can move about freely, other than humans. Pets are animals. Wild animals live at the zoo. Wild animals live in nature too. Animals. All right, so animals. Animals are things that move about freely, 
other than humans, other than humans. So it says animals need a place to live. They need safe homes, just like we do. All right, this next word is the word bury. It says they bury the nuts in the ground. Bury, to put in the earth so as to hide. The animal digs, it will bury something. Bury. All right, so bury means to put inside the earth um, as if to hide it. And maybe we're, we're talking here about the nuts that the squirrel will bury, but also maybe your dog might bury his bone so that nobody else can get it. And pirates will bury a treasure to hide it also. Let's look for our last word, and here it is. Can you guess why? Guess is our last word. Guess. To think or form an idea without facts. I guess we will read today. That is what I think. I don't really know. Guess. All right. So guess means that you are thinking or forming an idea without the facts yet. And it's asking you to guess why. And guess may not be the best word here because you can look at the picture and you can make a prediction. A prediction and a guess are a lot alike. But with a prediction, you have some information to base your idea on. So can you guess why or can you predict why? All right. Well, that's all that I have for you. I will make sure I include the discussion starters um, with this video so that you can talk about animals and their habitats with your big person.